What's going on everybody? Brian Mann here, Hands-On Auto Training. Uh, guys, for a long time I've been doing Isuzu trucks a little bit here and there using different equipment to get the transmissions programmed. Also diagnostic uh, with these trucks was easy with just IDing it as a General Motors product. I'm talking about the gas engines, the old NPRs, the 5.7s a long time ago. You could go ahead and check those with a generic scan tool or uh, just a regular scan tool enhanced ID it as a GM truck, no problem. Uh, the newer ones, the 6 liters and 6, what are the 6 O's and 6 6's I believe, uh, you know, we could still scan with a scan tool, uh, IDing it as a GM truck all the way up to 2020. You could still uh, ID these things. They still had a 16 pin DLC. I got here a 2022 that was giving us some fits. And as you see here, this 2022 truck has a nine pin DLC and also a ABS connector that has uh, for diagnosing the ABS. Unfortunately, I had to go ahead and purchase a new scan tool system to get in here. I got the uh, Isuzu IDSS software. Uh, just so you guys know, there is a extra cable you're gonna need here for this. You gotta get the nine pin DLC cable. I don't know if this nine pin is the same as other scan tools would have to go from a 16 pin to a nine pin. And I also picked up the ABS connector or the Y cable to get the ABS system to work properly there. And the IDSS soft uh, tool itself, this is uh, what, 2200 bucks or so on the internet right now or from a Suzu truck. Uh, it does have the 16 pin and a USB cable. It does not come with a box, just so you know. Let's go ahead and take a look how this software works. We're gonna go ahead here and first I'm gonna hook up the tool. Uh, just so you know, I did install the Suzu software and that software does take about an hour and a half to install. It was not a quick install by any means. So we have the, uh, the software's launched on a computer. We're gonna go ahead and take our DLC and hook it to uh, our Y cable. I'm gonna hop in here. This is gonna go in like this to the Y cable. And then the other end of our Y cable, the red end is gonna go to the black end of this to get our nine pin going on. And then our nine pin has a little notch. You gotta be careful which way it goes. The little notch is in the up position here and it's on there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hook this in. Once you get it in, it's secure. And then our ABS connector dongle is over here, this green one. Go ahead and figure out which way to get this in. That clicks in here like that. So this is the uh, software uh, loaded up here. I'm gonna hit the reset button. So you see there's no vehicle loaded. I'm just gonna go over the software a little bit that I know about it to share with you what I've learned. I'm gonna click on auto detect and it does take a second. And I might actually have to back out because I plugged the scan tool in or actually guys, that's okay. We're gonna keep it, keep it real here. I gotta plug in the USB port, don't I? You gotta be smarter than what you're working on every day. It's a struggle. So I'm gonna wait a second so the USB initializes. We're gonna click on auto detect again. Oh fudge, I wasn't even recording it. I didn't hit the record button down here. So there we go, testing. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the auto detect again. As you see, it's not loading up. Let me hit the X button. We'll X out of this and we're gonna hop right back in here now that I have the scan tool plugged in. Just so you know, we do have a power light and a computer light, so I believe we're gonna be okay now when we get this thing going. So I believe this uh, auto detects, it may have already auto detect. I'm gonna hit reset, so we got a fresh start. You see, these are all the uh, most recent technical service bulletins. I'm gonna hit auto detect, and it does take a second, but we do have the go around signal going on. It comes up with this page. Now you're gonna see, uh, from what I understand, technical service bulletins that pertain to this actual vehicle. My friend Tom here has helped me understand that I can make this bigger, you know, like that, with my fingers on the screen. So that's all there. Uh, we do have our service information for this vehicle. Now, if you want to get back out of the, uh, back out of the service information, you can hit this tab here, right here, or this tab over here, and you can, it brings up a side menu, pretty easy. So you can see we have our service manual, that's all our service information. We have our wiring diagrams right here. So if you click on schematics, uh, just so you know, it's, it's in there. Let's go ahead and just take a look at one because this is all new to me. So you got all the factory service information uh, when you buy this software. Um, and that's the wiring uh, diagram schematics. Let's take a look at the scan tool. This is the big, big thing we're really interested in here. 
I'm going to go ahead and hit the scan tool. So if I click on this DTC display, it's going to pull all the DTCs. So it's scanning all the modules. As you see, we got the engine. That's interesting. I think this, uh, we did do a crankshaft variation learn on this tool. Yeah. It says it's inactive, so I don't think we cleared the code. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we clear the codes. You can see we've got our ABS DTCs, and I think it still goes through and keeps on rescanning everything. So you can see up here on the screen, it keeps on rescanning everything. So I'm going to let that be. If we wanted to go into a specific module or system, we can just uh, double click on, uh, for data display, you click on data display. For the uh, DTCs for a specific system, you can click on this. Now, I'm going to show you what I got confused with when I first plugged in here, because this is all new to me. So we got this crankshaft variation not learned. It's inactive. Before this was an active code when I arrived here, we had to take care of this. Um, you can clear all right here. I'm going to go ahead and hit this clear button because I don't think I did before. We're going to go ahead and clear all those out. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I think we cleared them and then we did the crankshaft learn, really? got rid of the O2 sensors. So yeah. you see we have no codes here, but here's the thing that I didn't understand. I want to get back. I don't know what show talk is either. What is this? I better hit this button and figure out. Okay, so that brought us back to the, this main page. Let me go back into where I just was so you can see uh, another way of getting back. So we're into the engine. It's showing no DTCs. You can also click on this DTC button in the far right corner here, and it brings you back to that uh, page. So these little folders open and close. That's how you navigate around here. Um, and I think we're going to go into our ABS and clear our, our codes in our ABS just so you got a fresh start. Is that okay? Yes. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click on clear all and clear. Yes. And I'm waiting here. There we go. No DTCs in there at the moment. We can click on this button to get back. And then uh, if we go into our data display, this is what something important as well. There's different ways of looking at your data. Let's say we want to look at our engine data. You know, scan tools are all showing us data. It's kind of common stuff what we see here. But this gives a predefined list. This is a predefined data list. And you see there's a drop down menu. You can choose from these different um, uh, scenarios, or should I say, different preloaded, predefined data lists, which can be a great place to start. You can also create your custom data list, and you can also do a data list search, which I think is going to give us the same information that we had on our predefined list. But if we had to say, look at misfire data, we can click on this, and it's going to give us our misfire data, you know, right there. So you're kind of uh, able to customize this, but also um, you're able to uh, just use the predefined list, which might come in. Uh, easier fashion for you. I'm not sure. It depends on your skin, uh, your style of diagnostics. So this is good stuff. Let me go ahead and start the engine so we can just watch live data. Now I believe we have a graphing function right here. I didn't click on this yet. You're seeing it live. So there we go. We've got our engine RPM. I'll go ahead and so you can graph on this scan tool. That's pretty cool. You can also click on the snapshot button. You know all these PC based tools kind of have the same same ideas uh, of how they work. So we're going to hit continue and we're going to stop. We can also trigger that. So we've got a recording to play back, which is great. Um, once again, I want to exit out of this. So I believe I go to the show TOC. I'm not sure what that stands for, but key off, turn engine, topical graphical map. Yeah, it's going to be something. So we've got all these uh, lists here and you also have your output control just like anything else. else. Do I want to save the snapshot? I'm not going to. So I'm just going to hit no because I was still in there. So we can click on this output control test and we can test different functions. This is where I did a, a crankshaft variation learn, which they call crank target wheel air learn. We got that done. And also we have other functions here, guys, the full programming systems in here. I'm not going to program this thing, but I'm just going to click on it and see, you know, what they show us for the engine control module. So you have software and calibrations speedometer calibration, vehicle options. So this is a big thing a lot of people do. So you can adjust this for your customers when you need to. Uh, vehicle speed limit, um, all that stuff. Speedometer calibra calibration. Um, I am not gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click on this and see what there is. There's update calibrations. You also have your, what's your PMI or your replacement program. This is the first time I clicked on this. I don't have a battery charger on this and I don't wanna program it unless we're getting paid for it. So guys, this is just a quick overview of uh, the IDSS for Isuzu. It's new to me. I'm hoping it helps you guys out. If you run into these 2022s and 2023s, we're gonna be up a, a uphill battle. We don't have a way to talk to it without the right scan tools. 
I do believe that the aftermarket will catch up in the new, near future. Don't know how long it'll take for them to get on the bandwagon, but I tried multiple tools on this vehicle and couldn't get it done. If you guys like this content, be sure to like, subscribe, uh, give me a thumbs up, hit the notification bell. You guys take it easy. Have a great day. Bye-bye.